Okay, I want to talk about a really serious issue. This is a, um, well, I'm not going to get into too many specifics about personal uh, privacy issues, but this is my work van. And it's an issue that comes up in uh, 2000 to 2003 Dodge Ram 2500 series work vans, hence the, the extra lug nuts on the hub, heavy duty two wheel drive van. And apparently it doesn't, this doesn't necessarily apply to their pickup trucks. But here you can see it's got the heavy duty suspension, which I, I prefer to have on these types of vans. Um, because I do take it off road from time to time. And I think it's part of what happens with these. Although the other stuff I've seen online, they've dealt with this on some vans that allegedly never left the highway. So what's happening on these things is... This, this model, like most of them did, that was set up in this configuration, has the anti-lock brakes. And it's four-wheel anti-lock brakes. Apparently, the version with two-wheel anti-lock brakes has this in the same position. But there's some difference with the brackets that link the hoses. And what happens on these, when the wheel is on here and holding the weight of the vehicle, is this brake line right here... I put this nut to show where the other end of it is. It's basically this end here. They they didn't want to have a soft brake line. They wanted it to be a hard brake line, but there's a part where it needs to be flexible because this suspension assembly moves up and down. The problem is that when it's under load and when the wheel is turned a certain way, but actually, usually when it's pointed straight, when I was playing with it, the turning on a wheel and and when this thing's pointed straight it was when I had a problem but the other thing is it seems to be on the um, right turns that this happened so what will happen is that this juncture between the metal line and the rubber line that's the way this is made it's partly metal line partly rubber line and they put a little shielding on the lines. Different companies made these lines differently. So this was the old, probably OEM Chrysler. This is aftermarket. They put a little shielding, but the shielding isn't at this little stress point. So what happens as this moves up and down, you can see that it rubs on this part of the frame. You see where that rubs on the, uh, where that's kind of cleaned off? That was from the brake line rubbing on that. Now, there is a way you can, I found out later on, you, you can avoid that, but apparently it's not been worthy of a recall, and that's to bend this line back toward, toward the hub, okay? Bend it back toward the hub, because what had been happening is it would rotate a little bit away from the hub, and then um, it's not gonna get this rubber thing, this rubber thing hits up here, when everything's under load and under stress and that brake line can get caught in this little part and see how that was all rubbed clean and that was freshly rubbed right is it you see how that's all rubbed clean well what that did was that wore into the brake line so you, you probably see a pretty decent angle there the way I'm holding the camera that wore into the brake line and eventually weakened it to the point that it blew all my brake fluid out all over the place. Fortunately, it was stopped at the time. I uh, wasn't in high speed. If you're out on high speed highway and hills and carrying a load, this could kill you. Okay, this, this could kill you. This really needed to be the subject of a recall. There's been some discussion of it online. Uh, but it could definitely kill you. Uh, it blew all the brake fluid out of the system. I, uh, I had to drive a uh, short distance home, uh, fortunately not very far, and normally, I, I, you know, it might even be a call, call the AAA and just call it done, uh, because I was running at about 20% braking power. Uh, there, there is obviously a, uh, an emergency brake vehicle a system in this vehicle, but it's that ratcheting thing that automatically engages, and uh, when this happens, you do still have rear brakes, it's just that you're going to be losing your brake fluid like crazy and they'll, they'll very quickly fade to the point where you have very little braking power. Uh, I wasn't carrying a significant load in the vehicle uh, by the time I was on the way home, so it didn't become an issue. The brake line itself is something that apparently a lot of local parts stores won't stock. 
And it, this uh, problem, when I read about it online, apparently only happens with the driver's side. It doesn't seem to happen much with it, or isn't listed as a problem on the passenger side. And under circumstances like me, my life circumstances, I'm going to suspect sabotage. Uh, because if somebody's going to sabotage a vehicle, a lot of times they're going to take a knife to a line. But if you see these these wear marks here, it's actually it's a, a, a servicing issue. It's something a lot of people don't catch on the 2000, 2000 2003 Dodge vans. Once it's replaced, I'm sure it's good for several years. And then if you keep an eye on it when you're under the vehicle from time to time, make sure this line kind of stays bent back out of the way that it won't get caught between these things as the suspension travels. Parts are uh, all over the map on price. So I got this from Rock Auto for about tw uh, 20 bucks for the part. Not a very expensive part, doesn't take very long to put in. We've basically got a line connector here, a couple of bolts where it attaches to the body. Uh, the parts actually include the bracketing, which is nice. And a, uh, a bolt arrangement back here, which has a couple of copper crush washers just to help make sure you get a good seal. Uh, installing the new line, not difficult, not hard once you have the wheel off. The hassle is you've got to refill and rebleed the system, and I'm going to be hiring somebody for that. So the uh, refilling, rebleeding system is a hassle. Uh, most of this could be done on the side of the road. It's a hassle, but it's doable. The parts, though, you almost want to just order and have ahead of time. Local parts houses wanted 40 bucks and then seven to 10 days to get me the part. Uh, repair shops wanted way to hell too much money to do the job entirely in-house. And when I started hearing that same seven to 10 day number on the parts, I'm thinking, yeah, they're getting it, you know, maybe from the same people. Um, you go to rockauto.com, they, they ship everything priority mail from basically the middle of the United States. And it's, you know, three, three days and lower pricing. So this is something people should be aware of. I'm not going to put it in the regular part of my YouTube channel for very long. It's just going to be a, a public awareness issue. And my opinion is Chrysler should issue a recall or a warning on this situation because this, this is something that could kill people. It's, uh, it's a relatively simple fix, but you got to keep an eye on it because if it's left to factory location and specification, this can be a problem. It'll blow out a brake line because it rubs on the frame as the suspension travels, uh, especially during uh, straight ahead, although it has to have a fair amount of suspension travel to do that, and then on right-hand turns. So if you're doing a lot of right-hand turns that involve uh, maybe a downhill float slope or off-road and it's getting a lot of suspension travel and your brakes suddenly go out, this, this may have been what happened. Okay, so in removing a damaged brake line, what we want to do is, uh, there is a, a little bit of a sequence involved. The line here is coming from the, uh, the brake box, and basically the box for the analog brake system. I'm fairly certain what's inside of this is not fluid, it's an electrical connection, or maybe a pressure sensing type thing. But this, you would just use a plier to undo that. But this line you would undo before you unbolt that bracket. Otherwise you won't get some good, it won't really get good leverage on that. It shouldn't be super tight. Uh, if you're replacing this after it's blown all of its fluid out, it's, it's you know, not really an issue keeping it clean. If you're taking it apart before it's blown the fluid out, then, you know, expect there to be a mess when you pop that off. But again, because this system already leaked out most of its fluid, there's no drippage, there's no real issue with that. Next, you would undo the, um, the, the bolt right here. Uh, hopefully that shows up in the camera right there. Um, now that is a little bit of a different situation. The way this works is it's like a little manifold thing. You'll see a hole there. Um, that's a passage. This is a bolt that goes on that. And you'll notice it has its own little passage here uh, as I rotate it. There it is. Uh, you see that little passage? You notice how the diameter doesn't have the threads at that point. That's so the fluid can flow through it and around it. Now this is over 10 years old, so it's got a little crud in there. I'm going to clean all that up before putting it together. The other thing is we don't reuse these copper crush washers. These are made 
not just to hold it in place but to create a seal the other thing is there's no Loctite or anything going on that the fluid flows through there down the middle of that so this can't be substituted for another bolt don't lose this but when you get the new line it comes with a couple of new washers notice they're a little bit different from the ones that I'm taking out use the ones that come with your kit don't reuse the old ones so then you've got these two bolts that are used to hold things onto the body uh, from what I can tell basically the body bolts are 13 millimeter the larger one this one right here is a 15 millimeter and then you may be using sockets wrenches you know sockets or a wrench on that that's basically it and then a pair of pliers to get some of these little rubber keepers to come off that we're holding these two lines together so this is really just the tools that you're going to use for this everything else related to bleeding the system is kind of a different animal but the mechanic side of it that's all you need right there and uh, so we're going to get this thing put back together and I got to call the brake guy to come out and help me bleed the system and so in reassembly I'm going to reuse that bolt but I uh, cleaned everything with the q-tips uh, you, you pretty much got to break the tip off the q-tip and just use the little shaft portion of it to get this out the thing is, I had the brake system flushed earlier in the year, so I uh, yeah, the brake system otherwise was in pretty good shape. This is when at, all that work was being done, nobody noticed the uh, the line getting rubbed. So these go basically one high, one low, as it goes into that little position down there. And once they get crushed into spade into their spot, that's it. So I'm just going to put it in loosely initially to uh, to get everything else done and so it's the first thing to get tightened and the last thing to get tightened because I'm not gonna uh, I'll tighten it just a little bit but not crush the washers and then after everything else is together is when I really crank it down and a little pit stop from progress the torque numbers I saw on this thing didn't make a lot of sense so I was just tightening it with a wrench hand tight um, didn't think I was cranking it real hard but what happened is because these this little thing here um, you know apparently not made out of the strongest steel in the world or because it's got the hole drilled in it it popped so you've got to go get another one of these bolts plus some of those crush washers for it a little pit stop here and uh we'll get that just a little follow-up here i used a power bleeder one of these little uh um uh what do you call them mighty vac power bleeders on this thing uh, I wanted to pre-do it so I didn't have to pay the guy as much hourly to come out and do the uh, the bleeding. And I thought, well, I'll get it set and have him finish it up. And, but the thing is, I'd had my brake system flushed earlier in the year. And here, all, all my warning lights went out. The brakes work great. Uh, really stiff brakes. Uh, everything's 100%. And all I bled was the one wheel cylinder. Yeah, apparently what goes on when these cables are on their way out is uh, this thing was bad. I'm, I'm on another test drive here. But when, when this thing was all worn down from getting abraded, what happened is, is when I hit the brake, instead of all that fluid circulating through into the wheel cylinder and, you know, helping stop the vehicle, it was bulging and bubbling here. And that's why I was getting a little bit of weird feedback through the um, uh, anti-lock braking system. And it was getting a little bit soft to braking. Because when I hit the pedal, you know, of course these systems are fairly high pressure. It was bubbling out the weakened part of the hose instead of activating that brake. Uh, and it's made a huge difference in the way this thing operates. Uh, so replacing that line... If your thing didn't go bad, but you're having like little brake issues with your Dodge 2000 to 2003 uh, Dodge Ram full-size van, uh, my understanding is that the three-quarter ton, uh, I'm sorry, the one-ton vans may not have this issue, but the the half-ton uh, to three-quarter tons do. Uh, if you if you're having brake issues, check that line over on the driver's side. It, it and of course, if your brakes just died suddenly and it's they lose pressure you will not have much brake it's not like it goes into manual brake mode it's it's you're going to be using your e-brake to stop um then check that line down there by the wheel because uh once i replaced it 
I, I only bled that one cylinder. I was just about to go and do the others, and then everything was fine. The, the warning lights went out. The brakes are working better than ever before, and it, problem solved.